largest all-nuclear power plant in the United States is scheduled for operation in 1960. It is being constructed by General Electric for the Commonwealth Edison Company of Chicago, Illinois, and the Nuclear Power Group. Financed entirely by funds from private industry, the plant is rated at 180,000 kilowatts net electrical capacity at 85% power factor at the generating terminal. The reactor for this station is a General Electric dual cycle boiling water reactor unit that will produce primary steam at a pressure of 1,000 pounds per square inch and secondary steam at 500 pounds per square inch. The fuel is slightly enriched uranium dioxide in pellet form encased in Zircaloy II rods. The fuel assembly consists of 36 rods in a square array. The 350-ton pressure vessel is 40 feet high with an inner diameter of 12 feet 2 inches. Light water is used as both moderator and reflector. The 80 hydraulically driven bottom entry control rods are cruciform shaped stainless steel with 2% natural boron. The core, 10 and a half feet in diameter and 9 and a half feet high, is composed of 488 fuel assemblies containing approximately 60 tons of uranium. Located 47 miles southwest of Chicago, the entire station is being constructed at a contract price of $45 million. Clearing of the site began on November 28, 1956. In March of 1957, actual construction got underway with ground preparation for the 190-foot spherical reactor enclosure and foundations for the building that will house the dual admission tandem compound double flow turbine generator along with other equipment in the steam supply system. Approximately 19,000 cubic yards of earth and rock were removed from the pit for the reactor enclosure. The pit is 45 feet deep and measures 160 feet in diameter across the top. Power extraction apparatus, along with the station's main control room, will be housed in the turbine building. New and used fuel will be stored in a special building. And another structure will contain equipment for removing radioactive matter and chemical impurities from contaminated wastewater. While excavation for the reactor enclosure was being made, concrete piping to carry uncontaminated water from the turbine building was installed. The turbine building involves no unusual engineering or construction features, with the exception of the special radiation shielding. This shielding consists essentially of concrete walls, which will surround the equipment handling the radioactive coolant. By early 1958, all exterior construction had been completed. Major equipment for this building is being installed during the last half of 1958. Special steel plates for the enclosure were produced in the Greenville, Pennsylvania plant of the Chicago Bridge and Iron Company. The plates, which measure approximately 10 feet by 30 feet, are one and a quarter to one and a half inches thick. They were shipped by rail to the site where they were welded in sections. Each section was made up of three plates. The first sections to be erected were located at the equator of the sphere. By the time the reactor enclosure had been half completed at Dresden, the Vallecitos boiling water reactor near Pleasanton, California, built primarily to obtain operational data for Dresden, was started up at the General Electric Vallecitos Atomic Laboratory. This reactor is the first developmental power reactor in the United States 
licensed for regular operation by the United States Atomic Energy Commission. Operation of the Valacitos reactor at one and a half times its design power level confirms the design basis for the Dresden reactor. Experience with this developmental reactor, the Argon EBWR and Borax-4, indicates that Dresden's high operating pressures, forced circulation system, a relatively long fuel element time constant, low ratio of incremental reactivity of voids to incremental void volume, and close regulation of reactor system pressure eliminate any problem of instability. In addition, the Valacitos plant is being used to test Dresden fuel elements and as a training center for personnel who will ultimately operate the Dresden station. Recent significant information on UO2 fuel gained at the Valacitos laboratory and in the critical experiment and heat transfer test facilities indicates that the Dresden core is of sound design and has assured its capabilities in the steam production area. In the radioactive materials laboratory at Valacitos, UO2 pellets irradiated at various exposures under simulated Dresden reactor flux conditions are investigated to determine fission gas release, the thermal and physical properties of fuel material, isotope burnout, and other pertinent properties. At another location in San Jose, California, manufacturing and engineering testing proceed. Component parts for the reactor are produced. Fully mechanized production of the 4 million UO2 pellets, totaling 60 tons, for the first load of the Dresden reactor is in process. Procedures and equipment design are studied in a 54-foot high facility which simulates reactor pressure vessel conditions. Steam rise rates, heat transfer, and other data in connection with fuel elements are investigated in the heat transfer and fluid flow test facility. Today, the Dresden plant is nearing completion. The reactor pressure vessel is being fabricated by the New York Shipbuilding Corporation at Camden, New Jersey. The 350-ton vessel is so massive, it will be shipped by water down the Atlantic coast and across the Gulf of Mexico to New Orleans, then up the Mississippi River and the Illinois waterways to the site. The plant is on schedule. Target completion date for construction is October 1959, with reactor loading, critical testing, and initial operation immediately following. Operation of the United States' largest all-nuclear power plant is expected to play a pioneering role in the quest for economical nuclear power. This is Ernie Tatro here to bring you up to date on activities at Dresden Station. The story of Dresden is one of continuing progress. Let's pick up activities at Camden, New Jersey, where workers at the New York Shipbuilding Company prepare the reactor pressure vessel for shipment to Dresden. The 50-ton upper head closure is loaded first. It is followed by the pressure vessel. 300 tons of precisely worked steel that will house the reactor core, the heart of Dresden's nuclear steam supply system. Four 22-inch intakes at the base of the vessel receive feed water from four recirculating pumps, while smaller discharge pipes feed steam to the primary steam drum. With loading complete, the pressure vessel starts down the Delaware through 1,300 miles of coastal waterways to the Gulf of Mexico, up the Mississippi, and through the locks of the Illinois River. Finally, a three-week journey ends. 
the site, Dresden. At Dresden, the five-day task of hauling the reactor vessel nearly three-quarters of a mile into the sphere begins. Meanwhile, other components have arrived at the site. The primary steam drum, high-voltage power transformer, and the secondary steam generator. As the pressure vessel nears the sphere, all major components are on hand. From now on, the largest share of work will take place within the buildings that house Dresden's power generation system. Inside the turbine building, engineers direct installation of the 1800 RPM tandem compound double flow non-reheat steam turbine, rated at 192,000 kilowatts. At the same time, the main control room nears completion. Panels include both special nuclear instruments and conventional power plant controls. In the fuel storage building, fuel elements from General Electric San Jose plant arrive in specially designed shipping drums, each containing two fuel elements. 488 11-foot elements form the Dresden core, a total of nearly 60 tons of uranium. After unloading, the fuel elements are transferred to the fuel storage vault, where they await insertion in the reactor core. In the reactor enclosure, the pressure vessel is erected in position. Though the plant is rated at 180,000 kilowatts, it is felt that the Dresden core is a sound, conservative design with a potential for higher output. With the pressure vessel in place, the 80 control rod thimbles in the base are checked for alignment. The thimbles provide a guide and seal for the control rods which enter the pressure vessel from below. Above the thimbles, the lower grid is covered by a protective platform and carefully placed in position. Once in place, the grid is precisely aligned with the thimbles prior to installation of the control rods. As work nears completion, Workmen outside seal the last temporary access to the sphere. Designed around an already firm technological concept, Dresden Station marks a significant forward step in nuclear technology. Dresden, another member of a growing family of boiling water plants that promise the fastest, most economical path to competitive nuclear power. For Dresden, this is only a beginning. A great deal has already been accomplished, well ahead of schedule and within original estimates. Where do we go from here? The path leads forward. For the story of Dresden is the story of continuing progress. <laughs>